Women are oppressed and have no rights in Islam. Does Islam promote forced marriage? Women are not allowed to work or be educated in Islam. Why is all this oppression happening? This video will discuss this topic, inshallah. All praise be to Allah and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's funny to hear some people say that Islam promotes forced marriage. If some people do something wrong, it doesn't mean that is Islam. What is Islam's stance on this matter? Islam gives women the right to choose a spouse and keep their original family name once they are married. At the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, a woman came to him and said, My father has married me to my cousin to raise his social standing, and I was forced into it. The Prophet peace be upon him sent for the girl's father, and then in his presence gave the girl the option of remaining married or replying the marriage. She responded, O Messenger of Allah, I have accepted what my father did, but I wanted to show other women that they couldn't be forced into a marriage. The, the woman, woman can, can accept, accept her, her husband or refuse him, him. That's, that's great, great. but well, why, why do men have the right to oppress their wives? wives? The question you've asked shows a lack of knowledge about Islam. Did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands men to treat their women with respect and kindness? Do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Do you know 14 years ago Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, the most perfect of believers in belief is the best of them in character. The best of you are those who are the best to their women. The Prophet of Mercy tells us that a husband's treatment of his wife reflects a Muslim's good character, which in turn is a reflection of the man's faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ more than 1400 years ago, Islam gave women rights the West has only just begun to enjoy. Any peasant observe it. It's only in the last 20 years that Christian England has recognized the right of the woman to property. While Islam has allowed this right from all times, it is a slander to say that Islam preaches that women have no souls. Women, according to some, are the cause of evil because Eve encouraged Adam to eat from the forbidden tree. Is, is this, this something, something Islam, Islam says? says? In Islam, Eve isn't more responsible than Adam for eating from the forbidden tree. However, Islam holds that Adam and Eve made a mistake, confessed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them both when they repented. Moreover, men and women worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way, perform the same acts of worship, follow the same scripture, and hold the same beliefs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges all human beings fairly and equally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes the just treatment and reward due to both men and women in many verses of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى بَعْضُكُمْ مِّنْ بَعْضٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن ورضوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم These verses show that reward is dependent upon one's actions and not one's gender. Gender doesn't play any part in how a person is rewarded and judged. Education, Education is not allowed for women in Islam. Can you tell me why? Islam commands both men and women to seek knowledge. The Prophet peace be upon him said, education is compulsory for every Muslim. Also great female Muslim scholars existed at and around the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. Some were from his family and others were his companions or their daughters. Prominent amongst them was Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, through whom a quarter of the Islamic law has been transmitted. Other females were great scholars of jurisprudence and had famous male scholars as their students. The first university in the world is believed to have been set up by a female Muslima by the name of Fatima al-Fahiri in Tunisia in the year of 880. It is clear to me now that men and women are equal and there is no difference between them. They are equal yet different. While men and women have equal rights as a general principle, the specific rights and responsibilities granted to them are not the same. 
Men and women have complementary rights and responsibilities. In addition to physical differences, scientists know there are many subtle differences in how men and women process language, information, and emotion. A sociobiology expert, Edward O. Wilson of Harvard University, said that females tend to be higher than males in verbal skills, empathy and social skills, among other things, while men tend to be higher in independence, dominance, special and mathematical skills, rank-related aggression, and other characteristics. It would be foolish to treat both genders the same and to ignore their differences. Islam teaches that men and women have complementary yet different rules based on their nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Does this mean that men are superior to women? Men and women were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with different rules, skills and responsibilities. These differences are not viewed as evidence of superiority or inferiority but of specialization. In Islam, the family is of the central importance. The man is responsible for the financial well-being of the family, while the woman contributes for the family's physical, educational, and emotional well-being. This encourages cooperation rather than competition. By fulfilling their mutual responsibilities, strong families are created and hence strong societies. Also, emotionally, neither men nor women live a happy life without one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this beautifully by saying, هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ Clothing provides comfort, warmth, and security as well as making one look good. This is how the relationship between the husband and wife is defined in Islam. How, how should a man treat his wife? wife? The Prophet, peace be upon him, encouraged men to treat their spouses in the best way. The best of you are those who are the best in treatment to their wives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Aisha, the Prophet's wife, was once asked how the Prophet's conduct was in his home. He was like one of you at home. Yet he was most lenient and most generous. He was ready to give a helping hand to his wives in the ordinary work of the house. He sewed his own clothes and mended his own shoes. In general, he helped in whatever work his wives did. What value did Islam give to the mothers? A mother has the greatest influence on a child, especially in the earlier years through her affection, care and love. Undoubtedly, the success of a society is due to mothers. Therefore, it is right for Islam to honor and raise their status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا And the Prophet, peace be upon him, was once asked, O Messenger of Allah, who among people is most deserving of my good treatment? He said, Your mother. The man asked twice more, then who? And was given the same response. Only until the fourth time did the Prophet, peace be upon him, respond, then your father. And, and what, what about, about the, the daughters? daughters? The reward is not only given to the good and kind treatment towards mothers. In fact, Islam has designated a special reward for raising daughters that aren't granted for raising sons. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever Allah has given two daughters and is kind towards them, there will be a reason for him entering paradise. Finally, we can see that before Islam, women were considered shameful, female children were buried alive, prostitution was rampant, divorce was only in the hands of the husband, inheritance was only for the strong, and oppression was widespread. Islam came and abolished these practices. Even now, in developed countries, women are not granted respect, dignity, and honor, let alone equal pay for equal work. Islam, however, regards women as precious and valuable, not to be disrespected or disgraced. 
The mistreatment of women in some countries or Muslim families is due to culture factors that some Muslims wrongly follow, not because of Islam. Why would many women around the world willingly enter Islam if it is an oppressive religion? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَاتِ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما O oh Allah, forgive me, my parents, and the believers when the Day of Judgment will be established. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.